trauma takes people's power away. The trauma makes people feel powerless, whether the trauma is assault, whether the trauma is police violence, whether the trauma is racism or poverty. And part of our work as organizers is either to help people reclaim their power or for systems to restore their power. And that's like my sort of framework for this. I also believe in systems. It's why I'm the chief human capital officer in Baltimore City Public Schools. Like I be, and I believe that systems break in pieces, that systems rarely break all at once. And part of our work as organizers is to think about like what are the pieces that we press on that can that can like bring down the things that we want to bring down. We started Campaign Zero, which is a platform around ending police violence. It's ten buckets of like concrete things that can happen. So we created the first public database of police union contracts, the first public database of use of force policies, as a way to like show that the police are hiding in plain sight that in cities across the country. Uh, like in Baltimore, when Freddie Gray got killed, it was against the, the contract for the officers to be interrogated within the first uh, 10 days of them being charged. There's no other private citizen that gets like a 10 day window before they get interrogated. In cities like Cleveland and Chicago, uh, the discipline files for officers are automatically destroyed after two and five years. Like there's no other like really important job in America where like your discipline files are just destroyed. Like that is crazy. Yeah. So we were trying to shed light on those concrete things that could happen that we could undo. When we talk about the data, people think that we're pandering to white people all the time, but there are a lot of black people who like, until they saw the numbers were like, we just didn't know that it was as widespread. You know, the police killed three people every day in 2016. If you've heard any number ever about police violence, like any number you've ever heard, it all comes from local media reports, which is code for the newspapers. So if you get killed in America and a newspaper does not write about it, you are not in the data set. That is wild. So we think the number of police killings are actually underreported because there are towns with like no newspaper. And it's those sort of things that we're trying to tease out for people so they can be more thoughtful about thinking about solutions, they can think about the root causes. Uh, and we've seen that be important for people. There's a lot of people think I'm a gazillionaire, I'm not, I'm broke. Uh, there are people who also like question my motive. So like I think about Colin, so we all know Colin Kaepernick. He uh, protests, he continues to protest um, in the NFL is that Colin reached out very very shortly after he did the initial protest. We had a call at like midnight my time on the East Coast. Uh, great call, Colin gets it, super woke. Colin is an organizer at heart and he's like a dope person. He is as cool as you want him to be, like he's that cool. And we're talking and at the end I say like, Colin, let me know if you, do you want me to talk about the fact that we had this conversation or not? Like I'll do whatever. And Colin said, DeRay, I think it's important that people know that we all know each other. So please talk about the fact that we talked. Cool. I tweeted about it, I Facebooked about it. People lost their mind. They're like, DeRay only talks to celebrities so he can post about talking to, and you're like, that is just not what happened. Right. And I asked Colin, I was like, Colin, what do you wanna do? Like, I don't care, I don't need to tell people we talked. In those sort of things, I've seen people like read into the motives of things in a way that is annoying sometimes. The reason I continue to do it is like with Colin's a great example of that some of the work that we can do with people like Colin is connect him to other celebrities who really get it so that he's not alone out there, that he's like a part of a network of people who will support him and give him advice in a way that like, I mean, I can tell him the messages, I, we can talk about the police, but I don't know what it's like to be an NFL star and talk about like his sort of protest. So connecting him with other people who are as visible as him was one of the things that I could help him with. And the Civil Rights Movement was about how do we create a new type of leader who will then lead everybody. I think in this moment, we're saying how do we create a new critical mass? Like what would it look like to empower like hundreds of thousands of people like across the country with the skills, link everybody together? Like I think we could do that. And in five years, I'd love to see that happen.